And we are live. Welcome to Tea with Changelings. Uh, the Changeling Artists Collective is a group of fantasy artists from all around the world. And you can find us on our website, changelingartistscollective.com, and on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. And Tea with Changelings is a twice a month YouTube live stream where we'll, we'll discuss everything art related over a cup of tea. And my name is Eva Nikunen, and with us today we have Angela R. Sasser. Welcome, Hello, Angela. Everybody. <laughs> I've got my tea, and uh, I know we like to talk about our teacups. That's yeah. very important. So, so is, gonna... is there like a, a story behind behind that teacup? You know, there's no special story. I wish I, I had a special story for it. I just really love the surprise that this cup has because it looks very boring from the outside. But when you look inside, and I'm going to move my camera so you can see. Okay. There's this really cool crystalline glaze. I don't know if you can see it, but it's like a teal crystalline glaze on the inside. Yeah. And I love things that are seem subtle and then they have an elegance to them so that's why that's my favorite teacup because it's a surprise on the inside oh that's really cool i just i have a disney villains cup it has oh, like cute. all these kind of disney villains on it <laughs> <laughs> see that's awesome yeah. i love disney so that's i'm a, i have some teacup envy right now yeah, yeah. these are like kind of like classic Dis disney store teacups that i have or mugs that i have so <laughs> You have a favorite villain? Um, maybe the the evil queen from Snow White. Maybe just because that's my favorite Disney movie. <laughs> Maleficent's mine. So I, I see. I just need to get like a Maleficent teacup, so I can oh, be yeah. like all hail Maleficent. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Well, um, so what's our topic today? All right. So, uh, oh, there we're talking about. The Ladies of the Months and Kickstarter, which is a new exciting thing I have been working on. But before I dive into Kickstarter, I thought we'd talk a little bit about what are the Ladies of the Months. Yeah, because um, I've seen you working on these like for a very long time. So, can oh goodness, like, yes. give, yeah, give a little <laughs> background of uh, like where where this all started. Yeah, it's it's been a, a long journey with these paintings. It's a, a series, first of all, what it is, it's a series of Art Nouveau-inspired paintings and masks, which I'm building into a whole like, body of work inspired by the birthstones and the birth flowers of the months. And um, so it started out with the Lady of December, actually, the month of December. I needed to make a present for my mom for her birthday. She's a December baby. And we both love Alphonse Mucha. And he's an Art Nouveau artist. For those who don't know what Art Nouveau is, it's like a, it's from late 1800s, early 1900s. It's a style of art that's very whimsical, symbolic, and the defining style of it is very flowing line work. And so I, I love his Precious Stone series. And um, I can actually flash that up on the screen. Yeah. If I can screen share, let's see. Figuring out screen share. Pull that up for everyone. It really all started with Mucha's Precious, or Mucha's Precious Stones. She loved them so much. And I do too. Here, I'm trying to pull one up so I could show you. All right, screen share. Let's do the screen share. Have you ever seen uh, Mukha's, uh his uh, work, like in person or just? I like really, him? I really wish because I, I know his um, Slav epic is on tour right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how we screen share. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Take your time. Because like I I've actually seen there we go. Seen Mukha's work a few oh, times. Really? Yeah. It's so beautiful. 
I know there's a whole museum dedicated to his work. Yeah, um, yeah, I've been there. Oh man, I'm jealous. But yeah. here we go. I think it's showing up for you now. The precious uh, stones. Yeah, I can kind of see everything right oh. now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, hmm. Maybe that's not gonna work. Well, anyways, look it up. It's it's pretty cool. I guess it's not gonna switch. Anyways, yeah. I'll just continue. Let me go back to my face. Okay. <laughs> anyways, technical difficulties aside, uh, the series combines the theme of gemstones with flowers. And I loved that so much that I wanted to do my own because he only did, I think, four of them. And um, the, there's got to be more. I wanted to do one for my mother because there wasn't a turquoise. And the the birthstone for, for December is turquoise and the flower is the white narcissus. So I did this painting for her that drew upon many inspirations and not just the flowers and the stones, but also St. Lucia, the festival of St. Lucy, mm -hmm. where you have a light bearer come with the crown of candles. And it, it just was a way for me to combine all of that love of folklore and holiday traditions into a new exciting thing. It, it, I could do folklore, fashion, my own love of fantasy and just have it all in this one painting. So I gifted that to my mom, she loved it. And then a lot of other people gave me the idea for doing more. So why stop with December when I could keep going with more and more and more. So I ended up doing all of the months over the course of three years. And also, because I, I like punishment, I guess, <laughs> I ended up doing masks as well. Because I'm also a leather crafter. And that's my hobby away from art is that I like to do, to carve masks out of leather. And th this is basically made through taking a flat piece of leather, carving in it with a tool, and then uh, dunking this in water and baking it in an oven. So it's a pretty intense process. And then all hand painted with acrylics on top. So this is the mask for February. That's really beautiful. So the, the purple is for the amethyst birthstone and then the violet is the February birth flower. So do you make just one mask? So they're like one of a kind unique for each month or do you make more of them or? They're limited to just 10 a piece. So each mask that I have, there's only ever gonna be 10 of these. And uh, it's a good thing too, because they're, they're quite intense to do these, all of these pieces that the paintings and the masks are um, just very, very intense. So I didn't want to do more than 10 just so I could preserve my sanity. They're yeah. very, very intense. Oh, and then this one has the crystals on it. And I might as well show off one of the, the paintings too. Yeah, if you could just like, uh, tell a little bit about what materials you used for for those sure. paintings for that series. So this series, this is the Lady for November. Again, taking Mukha's uh, long format and the flowers at the bottom, being inspired by his composition, but taking it and doing my own spin on the symbolism for November. She draws a lot from Day of the Dead. And uh, the process for this, it's kind of involved because uh, I would start in Photoshop first and take my references and do a drawing in Photoshop. I use a tablet to draw the under sketch first and get all my elements together because doing the border designs by hand, nah, it's so much easier to do that digitally. So I do all the border elements and I even have an app that will do repeating elements in a circle, which is how I've done this design in the back here. And then I'll take that, print it off, transfer it with a light table onto watercolor paper, ink it, and then paint it. So I'm basically drawing the same thing like three times. Yeah. <laughs> That's intense. Ems artist in the chat 
uh, she says hello. So. Oh, hello, Ims. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and that lettering at the bottom is gold leaf that's done by hand. So yeah. <laughs> so all the um, all the pieces for that series are they all the same size? They're all ten by twenty inches, yeah. and they all have either silver or gold, genuine silver or gold leafed into the bottom. I really wanted to go all out and just. This was like my dedication, my homage to Mucha and how much beauty he's brought into my life. And I just, I wanted to do a good homage to him. So I didn't want to slack on any part of the detail for this. So yeah, <laughs> it's, that's why it took me three years. <laughs> yeah. So uh, at what point uh, in the project did you kind of like start to think about like maybe this could be, um... Uh, some kind of Kickstarter or some kind of project? I, honestly, I think from the beginning, I had the thought that, well, personally, I am such an art book addict. So uh, any kind of collection like this, I knew, well, number one, it'd be a great calendar. And number two, it'd be a great art book. I, I love art books myself. So I've been kind of intending for them to be a calendar and an art book from the beginning. And the coloring book idea for that came from other people who saw the line art and they said, oh, I want to fill in that line art. Angela, are you making a coloring book? So I decided to do the coloring book first since that's a bit easier to do than the other two things. So. Yeah, that makes sense because like, if you have a bigger project, like maybe you wanna start out with, um, something, I don't want to say like mainstream, but like maybe something that's a bit more like easier to to market to people. Yeah. Like, like that's what I've been thinking, like like the things that I try to do is like, I have these visions of doing an art book and everything, but I think it's better to start with, uh, not, not saying that your Kickstarter is a small project, but you know, it's something um, um, just like uh, deciding like what products to, to start working on first. I think it's important to. Oh yeah. And that doesn't mean that you can't like do other, like that just expands the, the world. Like your next project could be the art book or uh, like anything else in, in that world. So it's a, the, the coloring book I, I also wanted to do first because you're, you're onto something there when you say that you have to think about what products you want to release in what order. I wanted to do the coloring book first because if I can get this printed and available, I can make it as an add-on for the future art book Kickstarter. So it's something like a little, a nice little extra I can have that a lot of people like, so then I can just have it with those future products. And as you say, it's just a lot easier to do the coloring book because the art book is like this super precious luxury thing I wanna make that I'm still making art for. There's a lot more art that's gonna go into that future art book but the line art for the, a coloring book is already finished. So it's easier to just put that together and have that available for the interim projects till I make it to the big masterpiece of the art book. So and did you, did you ink all the pages uh, like traditionally or did you use yes, a digital I, I, ink? I used, uh, I, I know that's a little weird because I, I say I drew it in Photoshop, but after I, I drew, draw it in Photoshop first, I print it out on a paper and then transfer that via a light table. So I'm like tracing my drawing and then I traditionally ink it with micron pins on top of the transferred drawing. So it's drawn digitally, then traditionally inked. And then I paint on top of the microns because the microns are waterproof. Mm -hmm. That's all that mixed media process going on there. Yeah, yeah. So. And I love to use different colored inks too, because when you do um, when you do ink work, it has a way of flattening out your image. So I like to knock back some elements with either blue ink or brown ink. So if you look really closely at the line art for the series, they're actually done in various layers of color. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never thought about that, like doing different shades of ink. 
And it, it kind of occurred to me just studying Mukha's pieces and and seeing that his lines aren't exactly, they're not exactly black either. They're, they're more of a sepia. And I actually ink these in sepia as well. And I have to admit, I got the idea also from Disney. If you look at yeah. Disney animation really closely, they colorize the lines because otherwise it would also be really flat looking. So if you look real close at something like Mulan, the, they colorize the lines of the skin tones to be brown and then the hair is black. And it's, it's very subtle, but it looks good. In the yeah, end. I've seen that. Like I used to draw, like when I was younger, I used to draw a lot of Disney characters. I remember drawing like Pocahontas like all the time. And I remember like studying those drawings, like the original drawings from the animation and you could see like the different colors of the lines like in the characters and everything so yeah you really don't notice till you you pause it and you look real close and be like oh that's a little nice subtle thing they did there yeah yeah, yeah so I used to pause and copy the cartoons or like disney's gargoyles was the other favorite thing i like to uh to copy just for fun i love that show yeah <laughs> so, so um, um I wanted to ask about um, like uh, like preparing for the Kickstarter, like the actual campaign. Like, how long have you been like doing research and uh, setting everything up so that you could start the the campaign that's still going? I think it's like eight days left, right? Yes, there are eight days left, and um, it's it's kind of surreal for me because I've been working on the Kickstarter for months prior months like um, uh, last September I was already thinking about it because I was taking a class called Kickstart Art and I have to shout out to Kickstart Art hosted by the Make Your Art Work people Mark Sheff and Lauren Penapinto and Stephanie Poon Law who was the main instructor in the class because they helped me take this idea I had and have more confidence in it. And the class had like checklists to consider about uh, what you have to think of with a Kickstarter. Cause it's not just press button and go, you know, press button, get money. It's <laughs> one to two months of promo, which I have been doing prior to May. I've done about two months of Facebook ads that were funneled to a landing page about the book, which had information about the book and a free page for anyone who signed up. And I wanted to do that because um, the more people who can pledge at the beginning, the more it boosts your project and gets you on the front page and maybe gets you that project we love tag. And you and got that, that for your is. campaign, didn't you? You got yes, pictured. It did, which is, is awesome. It was a really proud moment because I've actually run a Kickstarter before, before I knew anything about what I was doing and it failed. Uh, can I ask what what was that project? What did, like? It was. I wanted to talk about it actually because um, the learning from your failures is like the biggest thing that you can do, and not letting it keep you from doing another Kickstarter because it kept me from wanting to do Kickstarter for a while. And what the project was was a print of Lady of January, and you could pledge for you know an open edition print or a limited edition print with an embossed lettering with the silver foil on it. And I was expecting to kickstart that so I could fund hiring models and you know making the rest of the series even better. But I learned that just one lady for one month is way too niche. You have to find anyone who knows anyone with a birthday in July or January. Yeah. And hope that they'll want it, you know. It's it was too niche way too niche and also i didn't do a single bit of promo beforehand i just said well i'll hit the button it, you know it'll be fine and um that didn't work out for me so hype 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 it's so important and you know what i didn't have the same audience then as i did now because i'd only had that two pieces under my belt then but now with the coloring book i've got you know, three years of having worked on these ladies and shared my obsession online with people. So it, it really helps that I've been building and building and sharing before I did the Kickstarter. Like, I think you can do it if you don't have a big audience, but it surely helps if you do. So 
Yeah, it does help. Like, uh, I can share a little bit. Like, I did a coloring book <clears throat> around maybe two years ago now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did just like a little Indiegogo campaign and uh, it funded so I could do the, the coloring book. But like, it was my first ever project. Like you said, like, um, it's maybe good to try with something smaller at first. And then you kind of learn a lot. And now uh, I'm not using like Kickstarter or Indiegogo or, or anything. I did um, like an illustrated journal. And I just um, uh, shared that like online on my social media and everything like as I was working on it for like the past uh, six months or so. And then I, I shared uh, the process also with, with my mailing list that I've been trying to grow. Like, during the past few years. So that's how I funded that book. So that's good. yeah, so you don't really always have to do like even a Kickstarter, like if you want to try something smaller, maybe just um, uh, like ask your like core audience who would maybe like to support you in your project, like start from there. And, uh, and then when you have like learned a little bit and then do like a bigger Kickstarter. So, mm -hmm like what you're doing now. So you kind of already have a little bit more experience of, of doing that first one. I don't even regret failing that first one because I learned so much from it. And it actually encouraged me to go to Patreon instead. And that ended up working so much better for me because Kickstarter is good for like one big product launch. Whereas Patreon, I've been able to groom my crowd there to you know they're there to see the art as i'm making it and they're invested in it emotionally so when i'm ready for that big project i can be like hey guys uh you know i have a kickstarter for all the work you've been watching me create in fact the first pledger for the kickstarter was one of my patrons so and it was a long ongoing project these pictures are so intense they just take a long time so it was helpful to have the income from patreon coming in over the course of those three years so it's um it, it's important to know that maybe one uh crowdfunding format works better for you than another so something else to to think about yeah do you kind of feel like your audience has grown with the kickstarter or do you kind of feel like it's still your your core audience like from your mailing list or patreon or honestly it's it's actually surprised me how much my audience has grown, which is the main reason I wanted to do a Kickstarter yeah. because the other option was to take pre-orders for the coloring book and just let people kind of pitch in that way. But I figured that being on Kickstarter would help get the word out to new people. And sometimes new people are the hardest ones to reach when you've already talked so much to your current fans. So it's, it's, I've had new patrons coming to Patreon which is so great. Thank you, anyone who might come in and watch. You guys are amazing. Because I never, I guess I'm still surprised that people throw money at the Kickstarter and then say, oh, I love your art. I'm going to throw money at your Patreon too. Because they just love the art. I'm just still, it's still amazing that that's happening. But it, it is happening mm -hmm. and that's great. And I've gotten lots more people on my mailing list. So it's, it's really been a great audience builder and a way to meet new people. So yes, it's been great yeah. that way. <laughs> yeah, that really sounds like you're creating something that is of value to, to other people, that they really enjoy it. So they want to yeah. support the, um, the Kickstarter, but also like the process of you mm -hmm. like, working on it. So I think people, they're just, there's just something gorgeous about Art Nouveau that it just brings a little beauty and light into your life. And I think that's, and not just in 2D art, but in jewelry and crafts and whatnot. So it's, I think I share that passion for it. And so do, do they. And I wanted to actually, um, since we were talking about how you were sharing during your book, I've also been working on sharing something during the course of the coloring book Kickstarter too, which are the little tone paper drawings. And um, I've been sharing these about two a week over the course of the campaign. And that's kept my presence up. And also these are pictures that 
people can buy via the Kickstarter. So it's it's twofold. It's helping support the project and also uh, keeping me on people's radars over the course of this month. Yeah, that's a good idea because like, uh, yeah, one important thing I think to remember, like when you're doing a campaign, say something that people can see it. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. And then just the last one that I finished yesterday, I just had to show her off real fast. But yeah, cool. go ahead, sorry. Yeah, just like uh, as you were showing the drawings, I thought about like um, when you're doing um, a Kickstarter, you have so much other things that you have to do, like you maybe won't have as much time to do art. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like a, can be like a, like a stre stressful situation because um, you kind of want to share, but like, I think it would be good to prepare like beforehand before the campaign that you have like images that you've already done so you can share those as your campaign is going on because like even like with my small small uh, like the the illustrated journal that I did I kind of felt like I did like a little uh pre-order campaign but I like I was stressed out all the time because I felt like because I was working on like finishing up the book and ordering it from like, and like uh, preparing for the shipping and everything that I have to do. Just like having so much less time for the art that I kind of felt that like I don't have enough to share. Like people are for, like gonna forget about me because I like haven't posted on Instagram for, for like over a week. And it just like, like doing the drawings before, before it gets really busy would be a good, good thing to do. Like that's what I'm gonna do next time. For sure. Yeah, me too, because I have to admit, I'm drawing these every two days as yeah. the campaign happens. Because and it's stressful. I ran out of time because the Lady of October, the final lady that I worked on, took so long. I just could not rush her out the door. So, yeah, I was supposed to draw all of these months ago, but it, it's happening now. So take our advice and do your prep work as far ahead as you can, because it'll, it'll save your sanity. And I'm also doing time lapses at videos of these. So I'm capturing footage and then staying up late at night doing video editing to put the videos out. So yeah, like for the next next Kickstarter, like uh, if you have time, like plan, like that's what I'm gonna do. Like have like um, a little folder, like on my desktop or phone, I would have like images that I already have that I haven't just uh, shared yet with anyone. So. I could share those as the campaign is going on. So, yeah, I, I actually made a little promo plan for myself in Google Calendar where I said, today I'll share this. So, and I made sure I had material spread out across every other day at the very least. And also, like a video going up on Friday so that people could watch a video over the weekend. And uh, related to that, I also have video footage that I took while I was doing all the inking. And that inking footage is uh, related to the, the coloring book and that people might want to see how the, the line art came to life. So that's all stuff that I took that footage years ago, but I saved it just for this campaign because I knew it would be something that would be relevant to the interests of people right now. So yeah. that's uh, sometimes you have to sit on things for a while, but it's, it, it's worth it. Yeah. So about the, the the Kickstarter, like, how did you plan like the the pledges and, um, like, is there like something that you might do differently next time, or have you been like happy with the 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 pledge levels that you have? So far, I've been I've been pretty happy because I, I wanted to keep mine pretty simple and straightforward, and and I'm I'm sort of torn because there are two philosophies of rewards. Some people are in the, they believe that you should only offer like the high price rewards so that you encourage people to get a large bundle of things that pushes your funding goal forward faster. Or you can do more rewards at different levels for different budgets, which is what I've done. And um, I'm still wondering if that's working for or against me. But I, I think it's it's working out okay. And I'd be curious to try in a different campaign, just having like, you know, the bundles and not like, piecemeal rewards 
So we'll, we'll see how that works out. But what I, what I have is just like a tier with a digital book, a tier with just a book, a tier with a book and a print and an enamel pin, or a tier with a book, print, enamel pin, and a drawing. So it's, I think those are all like pretty straightforward. The problem I ran into is uh, some people were like, do you have a tier with all of the prints? But then trying to estimate how much I would have to pay for all 12 prints plus the book uh, started driving my funding goal up too high. Yeah. And if I get over 8K, I don't think I'm going to, like, I have a kind of medium to small size crowd. So I had to keep it realistic there. So I'm the way I'm handling it is, again, like the simple rewards and then add-on items are going to be handled after the campaign with backer kit. So if people want to buy all 12 prints, they'll buy them after the campaign and it won't push up my funding goal. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Do you have like, um, um, like what was your idea of like behind doing also like the digital version? Was that like something that people had asked for or? Yeah, I've actually um, all of the ladies have been available as digital pages in the past. And I wanted this to be like, for, for example, I had a person who's a, a colorist tell me that they like they don't they don't want to damage their book. So they like to collect the book and then print off digital pages so they can color over and over again, but have the book as a collectible piece. Oh that, and, yeah, that's um, interesting. <laughs> I'm not too worried about piracy. I'm I'm trying to, to believe in the better nature of people here. Yeah, of course. So for me, I just I like that people can print it off themselves and not have to worry about damaging the book so yes, I, I because just... you have like a uh, your i'm looking at your pledge levels you have a uh like the just the book level mm -hmm. and you get also the the pdf with that mm -hmm. yeah yep i'm trying to entice people to uh pledge there and, and feel like they are getting a deal because they're, they're getting a pretty good deal getting that pdf without having to buy all the single individual pages and getting the the um, just the book, but that digital book is might just be a Kickstarter only thing, because I'll probably package the individual files differently for sale via Etsy and that kind of thing. Yeah. So the the digital book's probably just going to be like Kickstarter only. But don't take my word on it right now. It's still kind of in planning. Sorry, it froze for just a second. Yeah. <laughs> Are we frozen? Uh, no, it's it's back now. It was just frozen like for a second. I didn't hear your last sentence. So. Oh, um, so basically just talking about how the digital file, the book will probably be Kickstarter only and yeah. that I'll be releasing the digital pages as bundles in a different way for, for Etsy. Yeah, so, and you also had the 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 video on, on the Kickstarter page. Like, how did you, like, plan for that? Oh, my goodness. Okay, the video, I started running out of time to prep again. So we shot that video in one day, and it was, like, 12 takes to try and get it right. <laughs> but just that little bit of dialogue. I'm a horrible actor. But um, my, my husband helped me out with that, and we just did that here in the studio. And even though it was kind of a, you know, simple effort, I wanted to have a video because that's so important for people to see your face and engage with you and know that you're a real person and not just trying to scam them on Kickstarter and take their money. So yeah, I wanted to do a video no matter how crappy it was. <laughs> yeah, actually I made like, um, I want to do another video like for the, the journal, um, like that I'm, I'm starting to feel the, um, fulfill the, the pre-orders that people have made, but I will have it like after that, I will have it on sale also on my website, but I want to do like a better video. I did just like a little, like, um, like I called it like a teaser trailer. It was just like some music and some like images from the book, just like, yeah. Yeah. So that was like a very simple one. I didn't like record myself talking or anything it was just music and some text and the, the images but like if you have um like if i had more time i would have wanted to do like a like a better video like 
maybe so showing the process a little bit and uh, flip through of the book and everything. So I have like, I want to do that. It was a shame that I didn't do that for the pre-order campaign, but. Yeah, it's it's tough because that video editing takes takes a long time, especially when you have hours and hours of footage from the time lapse to compress. And I have a fast computer and that still takes a while. I yeah. was lucky enough to just have some of that footage on hand to work with for the Kickstarter. But what you did is great too. Just just having something is is better than nothing. And uh, if it helps anyone out there, the video program I use that's pretty intuitive is Camtasia Studio 9. And um, it's it's like a step below Adobe Pre Premiere and it's, it's like 300 bucks, but it's still not as expensive as getting like Final Cut or something like that. So that's what I use and it seems pretty easy. What was it called again? Uh, Camtasia Studio 9. Okay, I have to check that out because I've been doing my videos just with the uh... Mm, what's it called? iMovie, like just on my on my Mac. iMovie's not bad. I'm, it's it's pretty mm. powerful for what it is. So like, if you can do it, free is good. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it's it, I've heard um Adobe Premiere Elements is pretty good. It's like Premiere Lite if you don't want the the insane a number of features of Premiere that can be a little overwhelming. So that's the other one I I've been recommended to for doing the little bit of video editing you have to do. But I just, I like Camtasia, it's, it's easy. It also has a built-in screen recorder. So if you're ever doing a demo, you can, uh, on your computer, you can uh, broadcast it or record your screen. So it's pretty cool. So oh, that's cool. Yeah. I've, been th I've been like wondering like how people do that, like, like uh, record their screen and also talk at the same time. So. Yep, Camtasia Studio does that. There are some free ones out there too, but I, I can't remember the name of them. And um, there was something else I was going to mention, but I can't remember. So let's just <laughs> let's keep talking. I'm sure I'll think of it. <laughs> yeah, so do you have like, I've heard that like for Kickstarters, like the, the first few days are the, like the most important and then also like the uh, last few days. So do you have like something... Uh, uh, like some special things like planned for the for the last week of the campaign so the last week i am basically going to keep sharing more of these babies so i have the the most popular ladies ended up being like my fall and winter ladies so that's going to be my last week is sharing the final quarter of the year which are like by far the most popular and i'm also still sharing inking videos and sending out to my mailing list. In fact, I just sent one out today that was like, hey guys, there's eight days left. And then there's gonna be a, uh, what, 48 hours and then final day notice sent out to social media and my mailing list. So that's my promo plan for the end. Because usually people, like I, I've backed a few Kickstarters. Usually it's like, either you're that person who was like there like at the first, like second that it's live or then you're like person like you want the book but you're kind of like oh I still have time you know like but you have to remember to like remind those people that like you only have this amount of time left like you should <laughs> I know I know it feels like we're spamming people like it feels so spammy when you're sending out all these reminders yeah. but uh, I know myself I always forget to pledge to a kickstarter to like the final three days so uh yeah, definitely have to send that reminder out towards the end and um, just get the, the last few stragglers who are like, oh, no, I forgot. So yeah, you kind of like have to forget that like um, it just feels like for you, it might feel that you're like all like spamming people all the time about your project, but it doesn't feel like that for them, I think. Like um we kind of like I, I try to separate like the the person who's doing the art and the, the person who has to promote it like mm -hmm. i i want to get better with that but still like kind of like forget about the artist like for a second when you're like promoting the project because you really have to do that otherwise like no one's gonna know about it and like people can like enjoy it if they even don't know about it so 
Yeah, and I, I know it's so hard because most artists are like really self-critical and really like, I'm not want to seem like I'm being self-important and they don't like to do that. But you have to have a modicum of, of shouting and sharing to um, just be a freelancer these days. You have to hustle. So, yeah. Yeah. But you, you have know, like, I try to bait people like, hey, look, there's new art. Also, there's three days left. You know, like yeah. I try to <laughs> combine it together like that bait people with something they want <laughs> and then slip in a little news there yeah so and right. I think that's my plan what, one thing that i think helps with um like these kind of projects is also like make something that you would like be really honest with yourself like would you buy this like i think like you have to be like your first customer like be really honest like would you spend money on this i think that helps like if you are like confident in the in the in the product, I think it's easier to also like you have the confidence that like other people will enjoy this as well because I enjoy it. Yeah, like you get excited about what you're making. Like yeah, same with me talking about Muka with such enthusiasm. I'm trying to do the same thing. You know, I'm trying to make things I want to see out in the world. Like he never lived to make birthstone paintings. Therefore, I'm gonna make them and I'm gonna do something cool that I wanted to see. And then maybe, you know, other people are as excited about it as I am. So that's that's my philosophy about it. Like I really wanted to make this a reality because it wasn't gonna be any other way. So because yeah. like one one way that I think about it, like I really love going to like bookshops or like my favorite places. I love going to like really beautiful bookshops and I kind of like try to think um like what kind of things would catch like my eye when I'm there mm -hmm. like, like even like usually bookshops have like that like paper section where they have like journals or other oh, things I could get lost in those sections yeah <laughs> so just kind of like thinking like like I, I did the like the my illustrated journal I kind of thought like if this was was on the shelf at the like a bookshop I, I probably would pick it up because it's like the kind of style that I like so that was that, that's a good way I think to approach a project like mm -hmm. imagining it being like in the in an actual shop and then like would you pick it up? Mm -hmm. And I, I think it helped me also to like research how other artists were doing their coloring books and I and and going to colorists and seeing what they want because before I ever did did this Kickstarter, I went to the coloring book enthusiast Facebook groups and I was like. Hey guys, I want to make a physical book. What do you want in a physical book? And I learned, please don't put line art on the backs of pages because marker goes through and the lines come through the front. I didn't think of that until they said something. So like thinking about how your product's going to be workable in the real world and talking about he people talking to people who use those products so you can kind of refine what you're doing is really really helpful. Ooh. I remembered what I forgot earlier. Okay. I was going to mention a resource for people. There's actually a funding goal spreadsheet calculator, and that saved my life with this Kickstarter. Like, if we have show notes, maybe we can put some links to some of these things afterwards. But yeah, it, like this sheet where you put in your expenses and it calculates the fees and how much they're going to be and how much your final funding goal needs to be to cover the fees and your expenses. It's so great. Oh, so. I have to, I'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm. Wait, did you do yours by hand? You just, uh, that? yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Math, man. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to I'll use that for the next project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can uh, add links later down, like in the video description to that. Great, like, that'll, be, that'll be good. Like I'm a link factory. I could just be like, I can link here, 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 go here, here. I'm I'm a collector of links and resources. So, yeah. So how um like after the the Kickstarter is finished, like uh is is the is the book like how. Is it done, like the book, like all the art for the book, or is it finished, or do you still are you still working on it? Okay, so the the main painting line art plus the mandala designs are all done, but the stretch goals are for the line art of these ladies. <laughs> so if we meet the stretch goals, 
which hopefully we will, I'll be turning them into coloring pages as well as the fashion sketches I did because for each lady, I went through and did fashion plate designs because I meticulously did all of their costumes before I ever drew them. So I might turn those into coloring pages. And then the final set of images I want to add because I'm insane is little chibi versions because I love chibi art. So I'd love to chibify them and make little fun pages for people. <laughs> So those extra pages aren't done yet, but that's why I've given myself like six months to fulfill this. I'll probably fulfill it way earlier, but I'd rather have a huge window to fulfill and turn it in early than disappoint people. So, yeah, yeah, that's um, <clears throat> like that's uh, can be a problem sometimes. Like, yeah, it can be better to give yourself like more time than you, that you think you will need because. Okay. That's a that's a trap that I fall into all the time. I think that I can do things like much faster that that I can actually do them. Oh gosh, me too. I I always, especially with commission work, I'm like, yeah, I could do that in a week, and then it takes like a month. <laughs> and I'm, yeah. like, I'm the worst at it. So like, well, th my problem is, I don't plan for life happening. I don't plan for like a family member to be sick or me to be sick or a holiday to happen. I forget about holidays all the time. So yeah, yeah plan for life to happen because it will. Yeah, and, and I think happen. people are, are also like, like if, if it happens that it, it takes a little bit longer for you to fulfill the campaign, I think people are understanding as long as you let them know like what's happening, but. Yeah, and, and you maybe give them a, a specific timetable of what you're doing. or yeah. And also don't work on other Kickstarters while you're still fulfilling one, because that's that drives me insane. That, that's something yeah. I've been seeing, and it's like, hey, uh, we haven't finished this book yet, but we're already working on five different ones. And I'm like, um, finish the one thing first. Yeah, yeah. So, I'd, yeah. That's I've been paying close attention to that, so I don't end up doing that myself, which means the calendar I wanted to put out this year in another Kickstarter, I might have to push that up until I finish the coloring book. Like I didn't even think about that until I sat and went, hmm, I don't want to end up being like, you know, doing that thing that annoys everyone by not fulfilling this coloring book first. And that's another reason to do a project like this first so you can learn all of this ahead of time. Because I've never done something of this magnitude, even though this is still small. You know, it's like yeah, yeah, learning process. <laughs> yeah, like like I can relate because I'm kind of, like kind of stressing out at the moment because um, I'm fulfilling the the pre-orders for for my journal, and uh, it's taking the printers a little bit longer to deliver deliver the books to me than I first thought because the the books are actually coming from Germany. Mm. so they're coming from overseas so kind of like waiting for them that I can just like send them I've been like like I just want to like you said like I want to like complete this project and like fulfill the promise that I've made to people like sending the books to them as fast as I can and then just after that like when everything is done that's the moment to start focusing on the next project so Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's that was difficult for me during the the quote phase when I was trying to find printing quotes because mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at these companies that are in China and they take six to eight weeks. I'm like, oh man, I have to figure that out and how it's going to work into my schedule. And and but for me, I actually ended up finding a lo I was lucky enough to find a local printer who had a really great price. So hopefully that ends up working out. I'm sure there'll still be difficulties with that, but at least the it goes from six to eight weeks to one to three weeks when you get local, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And not everybody has a good local printer either, so that's the problem. Yeah. But it's the first time I've actually used a local printer, so I'm learning all sorts of new things about that kind of thing. So we'll see how that works out. Yeah, it's all yeah, like... Uh, the benefits of using a local printer is that you can actually like go to the printing house if you want to and see it like actually being made. That's how I made my first coloring book. It was 
printed here in Finland where I live. But this, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I was uh, like the next project that I do, I, I want to use a local printer. But for this project, like the journal, um, because I didn't like, I had, because I didn't do a Kickstarter, I had no guarantee of how many books I would sell. Yeah. So I'm using kind of like a, a print on demand service. And although they have like a local website, that like the actual books are printed overseas, so they're they're coming. But yeah, I think I think it's always better to work with a local printer. Yeah, same. And yeah, it's just it's so much more convenient. Although there's some things that I think, like specially printing, like if you do any kind of embossing and foil and whatnot sometimes the local ones can't handle that so mine's having to like send it off to another printer to do that part of the gold, gold foil on mine but it'll all work out yeah we'll <laughs> get there and yeah I'm, yeah um I'm trying to think and i'm also probably gonna use stamps.com just to help smooth the process of um shipping all of this because Right now, as a, a one-person business, I just use shipping labels and my printer to, like, do each one, like an inkjet printer. So I got to yeah. up my shipping game for all of these, all the shipping I'm about to do. Yeah, so. I've heard people talking about stamps.com that it's, like, really. Um, uh, uh, last time on this on this broadcast, we had uh, Heather, our mm -hmm. she was talking about, like, some kind of... Um, I, I, re I forget what it's called, but it's not like an ink printer. It's a label maker. Thermal. Yeah, the thermal printer. Yeah. yeah that so. sounds so much better that you don't have to buy, you don't have to buy ink for it. You just let it burn the label into it with heat. So I'm, I'm excited to upgrade because I've really, I'm a much smaller operation. So it, it's nice to finally start investing into growing my business and be more professional about certain things. <laughs> Like printing yeah. off from my ink chip printer. Because you save a lot of time, like especially when you have a big campaign and you had to print out a lot of like addresses and like pack everything and ship it. So like yeah. anything that can help you with that, I think is oh, good. Yeah. That's that's gonna be so much more helpful. And all the discounts that they give you for like US post, definitely appreciate it. It's the only way I could get shipping even decent on the Kickstarter was to use a service with discounts. So this international shipping's insane for us. Yeah, I've heard that it's worse, like sending from US to Europe than it is like from Europe to the US. Yeah, it's basically and it costs more than the books, more than I'm charging for the book to ship it overseas, which is yeah. I feel so bad. But it's, ugh, I wish I and could that, do something about it. And Europe also has those like you have to pay tax like on top. Yeah. Like, it's not, like it's not the business's fault that that are in the US, but like we have this thing that if I if I were to like I order things from the US like quite regular. So but I I know that I always have to pay a little bit extra for mm -hmm. the tax. So it it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, then, um, shipping and trying to think of shipping for the Kickstarter was also pretty crazy. The only way I could estimate it was like to try and think that I'll get this proportion of international backers versus like I estimated for an eighth, like 12%. And I just hope that I, I estimated correctly. And that's the other scary yeah. part about running a Kickstarter is just trying to estimate shipping. So we'll yeah. Yeah. I've heard like um, people talking about like really losing money on the, on the shipping side because they, uh didn't estimate a, a high enough price for the for the shipping so hopefully I've, I've done the math okay on that but you know i'm i'm super excited about this because like i was saying earlier it's it's been a passion project that has grown me as an artist and grown my business into not just doing oh random painting here that i liked or random commission job there but something that's that's mine that I can control the rights to, and that is something I love and that I want to see out into the world. So the plan from here is to just keep working within the theme, within the book, and maybe even doing more enamel pens based on the designs and like 
grow this IP and start spreading Art Nouveau to the world. That's my oh, master plan. So <laughs> have you created, uh, do you have your own website for, for the ladies of the month yet? Or is that something that you wanna create? Oh yeah, I, I definitely do. It's nouveauladies.angelicshades.com. And um, wow, that's a long URL, but that that's the site and you can ex explore each of the galleries for each lady. And it shows pictures of how I made the masks and there's videos about how I painted the paintings. And so you can actually go in there and watch how they were made. I'm still adding more video to it, but it's um, there's a lot there to explore. And I felt like it needed to be off my main site because my main site has like all of my Nouveau style stuff, but also angels and my book, Angelic Visions was like, it was a painting instruction book that I did a few years ago. So it's more focused on that. And the ladies just have so much information and so much art to share for them that I, I wanted them to have their own space. Yeah. Well, we can link that <clears throat> in the video description as well, like as well as your Kickstarter, I think it's already there. Yeah. And yeah, so we're kind of like been here for an hour. So maybe um, start to bring it to a close. Like, is there anything like else that you still would like to share about? Well, I will say that the thing I'm super excited about to move forward with next, like I was talking about, was just expanding this idea. Like the, the next thing I want to do with the art book portion of it is to start doing paintings that are more fantasy, painterly, like more surreal. So kind of bridging my Art Nouveau work with the other fantasy art that I already do and finding this combination of styles. I'm excited to bridge my multi-style work together because I'm a multi-style artist. So I'm just excited to explore new imagery and, and break some of the rules of Art Nouveau to create something new. So that's where I'm headed next with this. And I'm excited. Okay. And again, if you do a Kickstarter, plan early. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what, like the theme of this, this episode was kind of like, do your research and prepare and like everything will go a lot smoother. So, mm -hmm. And uh, to, to end with, I would just like to say that um, the Changeling Artist Collective, uh, we have um, usually a twice, uh, uh, once, in, once in two months, how do you say that? Once every two months, we have a Facebook auction mm -hmm. of original art, like from a lot of different artists and it's really, exciting so we have actually have an auction going on right now on facebook okay. so if you just go to our facebook page you can see all the art that's available and you can bid on on the on the original pieces and it's a lot of fun and the the theme of this uh, month's auction is alchemy so that's just like really cool so uh, i'll um have a link to that in the video description as well if you want to check it out it ends on friday 25th so yeah so much great work in there yeah Definitely check it out guys yeah so thanks angela and um we'll see everyone in the next broadcast thanks for having me okay wonderful to chat with you